Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah amabad. Today's video is regarding why it is incredibly easy to get married and have children. And this is something that the Muslims are incredibly successful at. And you just have to look at the, not just the Muslims, I mean, your Orthodox Christians and Jews and generally religious or traditionally orientated folk. You just have to see the religiously dressed people in their people carriers to realize that they are having many children. And why do people say they can't have kids? Because generally, let me give you something that the youth like to do. They like to go out, YOLO, party, drink, smoke, drugs, alcohol, etc. Take away, Deliveroo, Netflix, waste time. This is, this is not just about having a family. This is about being the optimum human being. I believe it was Charles Darwin who used to be on the paper 10 pound banknotes in England. And Mr. Darwin, obviously famous for his theory of evolution, um, famously with another gentleman that always gets missed out. He famously said uh, Herbert Spencer is the other fellow who was a more spiritually, religiously minded thinker. But my point is that Charles Darwin once said it is he who dares to waste a moment of time who has not truly understood the value of life. And so when one wastes their time, let's just use drinking and drugs, for example, going out on the weekend, whether it be sniffing, smoking, drinking, all of the above, the money that is wasted, I mean, you just have to find out the prices. I mean, it's a long time since I've delved into these type of things, but you're talking 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 pounds for some drugs that will just evaporate, disintegrate effectively immediately uh, within an evening. And then you're actually going out to get more. So it's another 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds, whatever it is. So when you realize that if I just stopped following my whims and desires, my selfish inclinations that just give me a quick fleeting high that will very quickly go away and then shock horror, I'll desire even more and go into an even bigger pit of borrowing money from my friends, wasting the valuable and blessed money that you know I've received, whether it be through hard work or through family. And you put that towards raising a family, uh, you know, providing for a wife and children and giving to charity and supporting your community. These are what's called night and day. And this is, I guess what I want to get at right now is spiritually, for me on my journey, so to speak, and I don't necessarily like that word, but life is um, somewhat of a journey. You go from life to death. It's, it became increasingly obvious to me that life has a ephemeral, intangible, that is to say, beyond the obvious, beyond what we can see with our eyes, there's more than meets the eye. And so the spirit, some spiritual path is necessary for a happy and sustained life. And I can see that may Allah preserve them and guide them to Islam. I mean, I'm speaking of my parents, of course, who raised me when I was young. So Ya Allah, please have mercy upon them. Without a spiritual path, your God does become your desires. It does become alcohol. It does become immediate gratification, living vicariously through your parents, that, uh, living vicariously through your children. That is to say, you know, wanting your children to be that which you never were, which, you know, why don't you become that which you want to be? Um, so my point is that this is not necessarily just about having a family. This is also about just being that old school motivational, inspirational speakers, LB, Triple P, Les Brown, your planet playing papa. Used to love that guy growing up. And shock horror, there was a religious context to what he was saying. Um, I've gone off, gone off on a bit of a tangent. My point is that why it's easy to have a family, to get married and have children is instead of going on your backpacking trip to South America, instead of getting a Mercedes, a Merc or a Beamer or an Aldi on finance, instead of wasting your money on some fleeting experience, 
Saving your money for a wedding and to provide for children, put your hard earned income into nappies and wet wipes, diapers, as they say, the other side of the pond. This is this not a more noble pursuit and something that's more lasting, something that's going to actually an investment that will come back to support you because, yeah, like I say, these experiences just get you deeper and deeper into complications, whether that be debt or mental um, fragility addiction etc and the other builds your character and increases your responsibility and if you're anything like me when you have more responsibility you step up to the plate and you need that kind of fire under your backside to get you really propelled forward so yeah i mean i've just mentioned lb triple p i'm talking about les brown your planet playing papa les brown a motiv motivational speaker from maybe the 90s or something and he often references the Bible. Now, again, I'm not against the Bible. I think the Bible's a beautiful book, and I think that there is some truth in it. And when you start to talk about, you know, he who knocks, knock and it will be opened unto you. Ask and you shall receive. This is really the, the foundation of how we communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have the humility, when you have the you know, you put that arrogance and that pridefulness and that kind of I know it all and how ridiculous it is for there to be a God uh, to one side and you just say, yeah, Allah, God, if you are real, then, you know, show me some signs. You know, it's a two-way street. And then when you get given those signs, you think, okay, well, this is pretty strange. But, you know, Allah meets him who takes steps towards him. If you take a step towards Allah, then he will take a thousand steps towards you. So, you know, it's basically an unfair uh, relationship. Obviously, every breath is a blessing. And how can we possibly be grateful enough for life, existence itself? I've diverged. The main thing is, this is an inspirational, inshallah, a motivational talk to those who are absolutely, they've been bamboozled. They have been, they're confused because they're thinking, I can't do something that is very simple. Spending money on drugs, alcohol, takeaway, holidays, parties, and that kind of thing is all well and good in your teenage years, in your early 20s. But when are we going to wake up, guys? When are we going to grow up and realize that the future is... I don't, it's, it's, it's almost... It's not crazy. I don't want to say crazy. It's, it's very interesting that I am doing this at all because my father's generation, when my father was our age, my age, I'm 27 years old, 27, 28 years old this summer, inshallah, everybody was getting married. It wasn't like my father was calling people to get married because they still had the expectations and the social boundaries of their Christian parents, even though they themselves were not Christian. Whereas now the following generation has gone even further away. The idea of marriage and children, excuse me, the idea of marriage and children is something to be postponed and postponed again at what expense? At the expense of unplanned childlessness for women and at the expense of generally unhappiness. Now, if you don't want to have children, then fair enough. But the majority of people statistically do. And what I'm saying is start now before you're ready. That's really the essence of this video. Start now before you're ready. The reason it's easy to have children and get married is because we all have money. <laughs> we all have money coming in. And this is where faith comes in, guys. I'm going to wrap it up now. When one has faith, when they need to get £10,000 and they have, they're have they £5,000 in debt and they need £10,000 in a short period of time, in six months to a year, you know, the logical, rational individual thinks, well, that's in, how am I going to do that? You know, I'm not earning anywhere near enough money. I've got to pay off my debts and accumulate savings for said marriage and children. But Allah has made a promise to the believer, to the young man who has decided to take those righteous steps forward and intend authentically to get married and provide for that family, for his wife and have children and raise them upon the deen of Al-Islam. He has promised to provide rizq, provision, to give, to increase the life, as is said on the video that I posted recently, my nikah service, my wedding approaching uh, two years ago now. Allah has promised to increase the provision of the man. Life for the man after nikah is easier, even though he is providing for more people than when he was providing for himself. Subhanallah. And this is the kind of 
juxtaposition, the upside down nature of faith, basically. You know what? There's life after death. Whoa, whoa, what? Life is easier when you have more responsibility and you're providing for more people. So you have twice the responsibility, you have twice the outgoings, but life's going to be easier. Why? Because Allah is going to increase double your incomings. And I can only speak from personal experience that that is the truth. Guys, I'm going to go pray Isha Jamaat, inshallah, right now. But the main essence of this video is to say that having children is easy. For me, anyway, I didn't squeeze <laughs> squeeze the human being out of my private parts, subhanAllah. But um, it's what I'm saying is easy to get married if that's what your intention is. Look for a spouse who wants to get married very soon, within 6 to 12 months. Look for a spouse who wants to have children very soon after getting married. And cultivate a strong, religious family environment, inshallah. And it's easy, guys, because like I say, where does my money go now? Savings investments, diapers, nappies, wet wipes. It goes into petrol to take my wife where she needs to go. It doesn't go on alcohol and cannabis and other nefarious drugs that do nothing but hold us back in this very short and fleeting life. The Jamat is coming in very soon. Thanks so much for listening. I have been Abu Mustafa Ko, aka Anglo-Islamic Gentleman. Always remember, big up your good selves, Alvida Sane, good folk.